Imagine suffering from a life-threatening irregular heartbeat and the nearby defibrillator machine doesn't work. Or imagine traveling on a high-speed train and the braking system doesn't work. These events nearly occurred because of counterfeit electronic components. That's right. Over the last couple of years, counterfeit parts have been found in defibrillator devices, the power supply of an airport's landing lights, and in the supply chains of a high-speed train's braking system and of an automated IV drip machine. Fortunately, the counterfeits were discovered and the ominous events were avoided. Counterfeit electronic parts are rampant. Let's talk about what you can do to protect your operations. Welcome to Manufacturing View. Hi, I'm Justin Barris from Alazo Electronics in Dallas, Texas. Oscar Wilde wrote that imitation is the sincerest form of flattery that mediocrity can pay greatness. While there's no corollary for counterfeiting, it is a currency that criminality pays innovation and that dishonesty pays civility. Counterfeit electronic parts is big business. The OECD estimates that the value of global trade in counterfeit information and communication technology goods is over $140 billion. As a reference, only about one-third of the world's countries have a GDP greater than that amount. Companies are affected with lost sales and the cost to replace and to prevent counterfeits. These costs alone are nearly $8 billion annually for U.S. semiconductor manufacturers and excludes the impact of brand reputation. For governments, counterfeit goods create costs of enforcing countermeasures. And the most important cost of counterfeit electronic parts is safety and national security, which impacts all citizens, whether related to defective consumer electronics or to defective military equipment. The most common type of counterfeiting is remarking. Other types include selling parts that are out of specification, cloning, and forging certification documentation. Remarking is where the part surface is sanded away in order to remove legitimate markings, such as part number, date, specification, country of origin, or manufacturer's name. Selling out-of-spec parts involves packaging rejected components as if they were good from the original manufacturer. Cloning is stealing intellectual property or reverse engineering parts and then manufacturing them in low-cost facilities, marking them as if they were from the original manufacturer. Forged documentation encompasses providing customers with false traceability. So how does this happen? Well, three-fourths of reported cases resulted from recycling of electronic waste streams, where electronic components were crudely removed from circuit boards, then remarked and resold. So what can you do to protect yourself against counterfeits? The answer requires strong policies regarding supply chain, incoming quality inspection, and engineering material selection. Supply chain policies involve vendor vetting, purchasing directly from original manufacturers or authorized distributors per accepted standards, and requiring detailed traceability information. Incoming quality inspection policies involve detection methods such as exterior, interior, material, parametric, or functional tests. These tests may require expensive equipment, methods, and time. Engineering materials policies can involve parts that cannot be forged per counterfeit avoidance methods, such as CDIR sensors or secure split test. However, these options are not always applicable. Eliminating the risk of counterfeit parts from your supply chain takes deliberate efforts, and the benefits are self-evident. We need to work to ensure that criminality has no one to pay and that innovation and civility always win. This is Justin Barris, thanking you for watching Manufacturing View. Thank you.